Right, good morning. Good to be here. Um, today I would like to talk about uh, something that's uh, really bothering me. I would like to share a major concern of mine with you. Uh, it's inequality. And I would like to focus on the inequality. Is that an echo? Is it just me or...? No? Okay. Um, inequality caused by our Dutch educational system. Now, um, the basis of our educational system is to uh, fight inequality. So, why am I uh, of the opinion that we are causing inequality? Well, let's take a look at a couple of things. Inequality. Uh, here's a picture I saw the other day. There's eight billionaires in the world uh, as wealthy as 50% uh, of the entire population on Earth. Think about that. Um, these 50% aren't as influential as the eight billionaires, even though they are as rich as the eight billionaires, because they have no voice. Here's them on a the scale. Uh, when I saw this picture, I was thinking one thing. Imagine being billionaire number nine. Would that, this picture have upset his day? Or would he have thought, this picture means something to me. I'm going to share my wealth as billionaire number nine, and I'm going to help out the 50%. Or do you suppose he thought, who's responsible for this? I should have been number seven or six. I'm going to fire the banker who didn't get me into the top eight. Which do you think he thought? I'm going to help the 50% or I want to be in the next eight list? Well, I suppose he's thinking the latter. Right, still, it's not easy being a billionaire because the eight billionaires are poorer than these three guys. It's the Rothschilds. Imagine the power they have. However, they're so rich, they didn't get onto the rich list. Right, there's two persons we need to uh, talk about today. One is Karl Marx. I'm banking you know which one is Marx here. Uh, and the other is Theodore uh, Adorno. Um, I'm going to talk about Marx in a context as the young philosopher he was when he went to uh, London to study the British Navy. I'm not to talking about Marx as we know him after Stalin misused his name to kill 60 million people. Marx was a correct fella. He was a young philosopher and uh, there's plenty still to learn from his works. The other one is Theodore Adorno and his theory um, deals with parallel society. And both are important when discussing the Dutch educational system. Marx went to London as a young lad and he studied the British Navy. And he said, well, the British Navy is worth uh, studying. And this is what he saw. He saw bright young men on the upper deck. And they had gone to Eton to get schooled. Uh, they could go to Eton because the parents were rich. And as they went to Eton and progressed, they were able to get key positions and marry in key positions, making even smarter children and more influential children. As he looked below decks, he saw these guys shoveling coal into the steam engines. And Marx then said, well, if this is true, upper deck is upper class and lower deck is lower class. Now, there's nothing wrong in the theory of Marx with being lower class. Freud said, two things give meaning to life. Love and labor, being able to work, being able to make a living. Now, if you're lower class, I mean, I'd rather be upper class, but still. If you're lower class, you can work, and you can live in a house, you can love your wife. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, this is where things are going to bother me. Does Marx still exist today? These are my students. I've been working in education for the last 25 years. I've mainly uh, worked in the poor areas. Think of the Schilderswijk uh, in The Hague, or Duindorp, or the south of uh, Rotterdam. These kids are neglected and we are excluding them from our society. Our educational system, in the primary system, is a minefield for these children, meaning they can only go to secondary level on the lowest levels we have. Our secondary schools are designed as an extra filter to keep them from being successful in life. 
I will comment on that later. This is the social index of my students in the south of Rotterdam. It's on a scale of 1 to 10. If it's in the red, your life is in danger. So these children, as a consequence, have a reduced healthy life expectancy of 20 years compared to the average Dutch child. 20 years. And the years they do live, well, they're not so pleasant. Children should not live under these conditions. And I'm talking about a rich West European country, Holland, and I'm talking about a wealthy town, Rotterdam. Still, they belong to the poverty cycle. Poor housing, parents who haven't studied, streets where it's violent, and schools which don't have any money because school boards keep stealing the money of the children. As a consequence, these schools can't mean anything for these kids. Hence, no education. It's an endless cycle. Right, Marx. Well, at least he said we have upper class and lower class. In 2017, uh, we've got a really small upper class. There's this huge middle class, yeah, yeah, and we're all frustrated because we're stuck in traffic jams trying to get things done. And we have uh, a new lower class, but it's not lower class, it's the unemployed class. So Marx is off the table. Theodore Adorno then says, if you have two systems in one society, you get a parallel society. Now, what do I mean by that, or does he mean by that? He says, the Dutch educational, of the Dutch system is based on democratic principles, and there's another system here uh, based on religious principles. He doesn't say one is better than the other, he just says the two can't exist next to each other. Now, if you take a look at the major cities in Holland, the unemployed classes is mainly uh, second and third generation immigrants. And what do we say to these children? Well, the primary system is a minefield for you. In a secondary system, you need to be excellent in Dutch, English, and mathematics, the three most terrible subjects if you're a second or third generation immigrant. So there's this minefield you need to go through, and after that, you aren't allowed to participate in anything. If you've got a funny surname, try solicitating in this country. If you wear a veil, try getting into a job in this country. We are excluding these people. And if you exclude people, they will go back to a society where they're not excluded. Think about that. We should return to an inclusive society. So in 2009, we got together 60 teachers and an excellent janitor, and we said, well, if Marx is true and Adorno is true, and we can't do it in a regular Dutch educational system, we are going to make a new school. It's called the super school. And what does the super school mean? Well, nothing really, apart from the fact I need you to work two jobs and you're going to get paid one because I don't know how otherwise we can beat the Dutch educational system for these children. And these 60 heroes said, we're going to do this thing. And they housed us in the worst building of Holland. There's this educational building list of the 150 uh, most terrible buildings in Holland, and they gave us the number one position. We got the crappiest building in Holland. And I said, well, that doesn't matter, because they can't influence this. You're an excellent teacher of mathematics. You're an excellent teacher of geography. They can rob you of this. We're going to teach our children. And I said, this is their truth. At home, there's poverty and there's violence. In the streets, there's poverty and violence. Doesn't matter if the school performs or it doesn't perform. No, because you're going to lose to the houses and the environment. This is their truth. Your kids, if they have educated parents, and there's a certain amount of wealth, they're going to be all right. But out of the 365 days a year, if it isn't in order at home or in the environment, the school is going to lose because we only have them for a thousand hours. So we're going to change the system. This is the Dutch system. You know this, this, this picture. The monkey's laughing his head off, isn't he? Imagine being the goldfish. There's 604,000 children living underneath the poverty line. They're the goldfish. So we decided this is what it needed to be. And I wasn't 
really pleased with this. So we said, we are getting into their houses. We're going to help them at home. We are going to change the streets. We're going to run away the drugs traffickers. We're going to run away the lover boys. Our school is going to be a huge statement, statement to the streets, but also to our government. Because we still, as teachers, believe this. If you want to include people, we need to work harder, but we're going to be successful against the odds. And we weren't superhumans. We didn't wear Superman outfits. This is just us. Gray, bellies, but intellectual, and passionate, and committed. After a couple of years, we started performing, doing well. Our students, 98% of our students were risk-indicated, meaning they had no hope at all of getting a diploma. In 2013, just after four years of passion and being committed and extra hours, we became uh, the best VWO in the south of Holland. Then in 2014, we became the best HAVO in the Netherlands because of my teachers, because of my excellent janitor, because of passion. Then in 2016, out of the 1,100 secondary schools in Holland, uh, we reached fifth place, place sorry, in mathematics. And why? We want our children to have a future as well. We don't want to have a split society where the white have privileges, because that's happening. That's what I've seen for the last 25 years. And where the second and third generation of immigrants don't have any chances whatsoever. Parallel society is going to ruin our society. This was our success rate. We got them diplomas. We didn't only get them diplomas, we got them self-esteem. We got them confidence. And in the end, we got them to perform much higher than any other Dutch school. Out of all the schools in the Netherlands, we blew them straight out of the water. Boy, we had a party. We loved our parties. We sometimes we had headaches from all the hard work. And after all the headaches from the hard work, we had headaches from the parties. And why? Because of these students. They deserve a place in our society. If you think there's just inequality with the eight billionaires, think again. We have a huge inequality in the Netherlands with the second and third generation immigrants, but also in the poorer white areas, Hogeveen or Eindhoven, where there's so much alcoholism. Yeah. But we define society in Holland by gross national product. Not by happiness. And in the hunt for gross national product, we are going to be unhappy. We don't have trade partners. We have countries we trade with because there's a low-income labor force there. That's not being a partner. That's misusing people in other countries. We want to include these children. Take a look at Fatma. She is wearing the Dutch flag. What about that for a statement? And why? Because we got her a diploma, and she's now doing well at Polytechnic. We don't want to divide people, but we do. The Dutch educational system is a minefield for children whose parents haven't been educated, where there's no form of prosperity. And then, if you add up to that list that our educational system at primary level is a minefield, they will struggle to find their place. Right. That was a beautiful story. However, after we started performing, the other school boards in Rotterdam said, that school is getting all the students. Of course we were, because you were welcome and we gave you a future. When you enter our school, we promise you a future. But they became envious and they started working at our school. And so the city council retrieved a number of funds for our school. Our teacher staff grew tired. The headmaster ended up in hospital with a heart attack. 
and then they fired, they started working on the headmaster and they fired him. After he left, about 15 serious teachers left the school as well. And they killed the dream, the bigger boys killed the dream. Now, I'm not much of a conspiracy thinker, though I'd still like to know who shot Kennedy. Um, but why did they kill this super school? Why did they kill this ideal? Where was the House of Commons? Where were the politicians? I mean, I saw them on TV saying we need to get involved with education, but why didn't we see it at our school? Theodore Adorno. I'm here today not to be left-wing or right-wing, but I want to caution us. The elections are coming up, and we need to think about Theodore Adorno, parallel society. It's happening in Birmingham. They have shoved away the second and third generation immigrants so much that there's Sharia law in Birmingham. The other day, this woman wants to get divorced, and the English judge said, well, if you want to get divorced, just fill in the papers, have a laugh, be on your way, divorce. And the Sharia court said, if you do that, we're going to throw acid in your face. It's happening in the major cities in Germany. And I predict it's going to happen in the Netherlands as well. And why? Because I understand them. Freud said two things give meaning to life. One is love, one is labor. And if we take away systematically all the chances, if they look at our school system in hope, and our school system dictates you won't be successful and you won't be involved in anything, we shouldn't be surprised that the result of that will be that if they are excluded, they're not going to act included. Thank you.